So I wanted to ask one other question, um, you know, because I have always been quite harsh on ideology, uh, you know, as a topic and as a concept when it comes to, you know, talking about and discussing it in these videos. I will always draw attention to the ways that it's been used to, you know, hurt us, make us weaker, uh, make us blind or oblivious to certain important realities you know, and be manipulative in many other ways. But you've always contested me on that and, you know, pointed to the fact that, you know, they can have applications that are actually useful and good for helping people and stuff like that. Something. You've consistently sort of always reminded me of that as well, right? You know, and I've always, you know, well, not always. This is a maturity that I gained much later as an intellectual and as a claimant to knowledge. But, you know, I've, I've tried to remain sort of tolerant or, you know, open-minded towards the idea that, you know, sometimes ideology can actually be good. It can be, you know, benevolent in terms of why it was created and what it actually accomplishes as well. So, you know, having said that, you know, you had recently let me know that you, you sort of have uh, been practicing kind of, I guess what I would call, I guess, like a spirituality, uh, a specific spirituality. Yeah. And you, you, you told me what it was, and I'm sorry, I forget the, the, the specific terminology. So I, I, I said, well, okay. And, and you, you said, well, it's, it's heathenism is like the category that it belonged to or whatever. And then, you know, and I didn't even know what that was. It made me think of like hedonist or, or whatever, or like, you know, like Satanism, like Anton LaVey or is a fucking, or whatever. But, you know, then, but you, you elaborated that this was basically just like ancient European spirituality, you know, and, uh, that existed like like we we obviously don't learn about any of this in our school systems or anything like that and you know like if anything we, we go to sunday school and learn about the, the religion from the desert you know instead however um yeah i wanted to ask you specifically what it was about this uh you know that that uh, brought made you so interested in it and you know how, how maybe you think that maybe it might be you know like perhaps well, you know safe to assume that you would consider it a type of ideology that's helpful to have so so why would it be or you know why would you want to have you know I, i'm just curious good questions first of all not heathenism heathenry different words okay fair um, enough i understand the importance of that but i don't know the words of yeah. this type of stuff so yeah not not an ism in the sense of heathenry as it is well, like we have concepts like folklore, right? And what was that? It was like a tool for, you know, illustrating elaborate things before there was, you know, sophisticated resources and tools and technology for that. Well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by that, I guess. I mean, folklore is just the lore of the folk. And for much of history, uh, that was in a world tradition. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was preserved... Uh, culturally, you know, within people, um, Christianity especially, you know, did away with a lot of that. Mm -hmm. so getting back China to went through a similar thing as well. One dynasty that they had included like the erasure of all their art. Nowadays, they're trying to preserve it. So if you have any of the paintings or whatever that were traditional Chinese art that survived that, they'd be worth a lot and they'll be trying to buy it back. And, yeah. But anyway, you sorry. You so, carry. you know, as uh, as a person of the European diaspora in Nova Scotia, um, myself, um, you know, I know, or I've been endeavoring to know what my own standpoint is. Um, so your, your, your question was, you know, what is the advantage of having this belief, uh, in, 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 and a spiritual belief is what it is. Well, it seems to be one that's more based off of actual, like biological sort of sensibilities, ideas that we might not fully understand yet that are about genetics or you know, different things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, um, I haven't given you the book, the first book that I read on the topic. I have the book. Um, so I'll, 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 I would happily lend it to you. Sure. I'd probably be pretty interested in reading that. Yeah. You've still got some of my books out. <laughs> I, but, do. Uh, you know, I do. I do. I'm not, you know, I just gave those to you. So it yeah. should be good for a while. Yeah. No, that's uh, we exchange books. That's a good thing. Yeah. Exchanging books is, is cool. Yeah. Not many people still do that. Yeah. <laughs> even if you give a book to another person they don't give it back you gotta be prepared to that's, lose it that's part of the whole culture that, of it that's fine yeah what's wrong with that that's like a good thing yeah. and now pc the U is on their shelf and they'll remember that yeah. someday yeah. so to answer your question directly mm -hmm. so 
the year was 2021 and I was learning about psychology um, and one thing that I found in psychology is there is some established evidence that people who have a spiritual connection uh, are happier and live longer and have better health outcomes. Yeah. And I thought that was very interesting. Well, they're defining it as spiritual, but what it might m be better described as is like enlightened or something, right? Like Bertrand Perhaps. Russell was a militant atheist and he was one of the happiest people who ever lived, just like Gandhi or whoever. Yeah. Had the same ideas about morality and peace, in yeah. fact. You know, he was, you know, he True. said, he said that uh, specifically, you know, the key to happiness is understanding how terrible the world actually is facing that fact, right? So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, So yeah, he was he was a British analytic philosopher who right. like, you know, would 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 actually agree with Gandhi when it comes to morality and peace and all that sort of stuff, which is very interesting, especially if you but think of. Let me challenge yeah. you on that. Did he really believe in morality? Really? Did did he care about how many people died? Bertrand Russell. Or 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 did he care more about the consequences of what nuclear weapons? Well, who knows what his calculations really were? I mean, he was very much a genius who cared about humanity, as far as I'm concerned. But you know, like he was operating within a very dangerous area, which is high-level academics, and he was actually doing some pretty serious things. So he convinced the British government to maintain their education systems and integrity when everyone else was destroying theirs yeah. after the war. And you know, he 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 was also very popular for speaking out against the war when it was World War One. But then when World War Two happened, he, you know, said, "Well, you know, you should decide for yourself if you specifically want to go in this war." Is what he said. Okay. When you know he came out to give a statement that everybody expected for him to just go against the war again for yeah. Britain, right? Yeah. No, Why no. would we be fighting over there? That makes sense, no, right? No. He was the voice of that. I I won't dispute that. Yeah. Um. So getting back to what I said. It seems that having a spiritual connection gives you better health outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, you're happier. I mean, these things have been studied. It's pretty well established. I've well, religion used to be what was in charge of looking after people's mental health, right? The church and everything before all this corruption and even before like psychiatry and stuff, and, you know, the like corrupt ways that the, you know, that they would do exorcisms and other types of shit or whatever. Like some of it was even probably legitimate attempts based on what they thought to be the problems. But yeah. regardless, you know, like they were up to just dealing with all that stuff. And so like it or not, most of our intellectual history and heritage and traditions went into that. And there were a lot of good people involved that used the, you know, like being a priest and being, you know, acquainted with the, the scripture and stuff very intimately. They, they just use that as their materials with which to try to help you know in the ways that they could yeah. so it's always been a whole complicated set of affairs of many different you know dynamic individuals that are you know operative and at play that might have conflicting interests even though they have to cooperate for the most part i was a christian when i was a, uh when i was a teenager i was a christian i i went to church i liked to hear about the bible stories i believed that was my heritage when I was in high school, I became agnostic. Uh, you could even say atheist. Mm -hmm. And I would say for... You got into listening to heavy metal music, right? Correct. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So That always is such an interesting en encapsulation of like the mindset, right? That we've, you know, internalized and pushed into like our sub like, you know, like our subconscious. It's just that anger and aggression and precision and, you know ingenuity with technology coming out in forms that like aren't even you know like like you listen to some of these guys in a grindcore band and it's like it's impressively hard to listen to but like nobody else could recreate that and it's just like the ultimate fuck you to like what used to be like classical you know chamber music s sort of stuff but it's I, interesting i was a teenager yeah i was a teenager and i heard children of bodom and i thought i want to listen to this Continually. Yeah, same here. I love that. Alexi Leo was like, <clears throat> inspired me to start playing guitar. And that, that coincided with me saying, do I really believe that, you know, the Bible is true? And 
do I really believe? And all these other things too, like, you know, like moving away from society, right? Because like at the time, you know, nobody else was listening to metal, really not many in our area. It was like a very underground subculture, but it was still getting like shows and shit to Halifax though, True. importantly. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I became ag agnostic. I would say secular uh, for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the secular worldview served me in such a way that the rational aspect, you know, the, the, the aspect that demands rational understandings for phenomena, I think that there's a big advantage in that pull and that justification that you know, everything needs to be explained. Well, even if you understand things that way, you can still look at, like, these overall things about the universe that are pretty, like, psycho psychedelic, almost, sort of qualities that it has as a quintessential organism that it is, and then you can ponder sort of the absurdities and the intricacies of these things, and it's, it's almost quasi-spiritual. I think about that shit all the time. But yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm, you know, entertaining any kind of religious ideology, though. Well, my experience is that in my early 20s, I would say that I was hyper-rational, atheist, mm -hmm. secular. Same here, for sure. And I know a lot of people. And then, and then you know, because at, at the, that, back at that time, that was still the rational position. Now most of the rational people are actually on the Christian side, just because the Soros sort of propaganda has gotten so objectionable, even in the eyes of normies that they need to, you know, have some kind of unifying thing to assemble under. And, you know, the idea of return to tradition or rejecting those new values that are artificially being foisted on a society, they latch on to the only thing that, it, you know, that was unifying and traditional, which is Christianity. But the, the, the bad news is that that thing was literally designed and used to, to screw us in the first place. But that part of our history has been erased from memory. Yeah, you know, it, like it's... I Personally, I don't understand how people can cling to Christianity as tradition. It's not the tradition of our people. Yeah, and it's also just like, you know, like, I, you know, like, yeah, it's very well documented. You know, I'm sure he was a person that probably went to Passover, was crucified, and blah, 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 blah. You know, anything that goes against the laws of nature, obviously, didn't happen as far as I'm concerned. You know, so you have to cut it to, you know, the way things were understood and told back then which was like mythology folklore all this shit it archetypes a, it was a semitic mediterranean cult that took hold that had always been parasitic upon in, sumerian societies in, in the greco-roman world mm -hmm. until they decided to exploit it yeah well they they gained control of it that was very quite you know the type of control you would suspect of people to over the time sort of gain if they're maintaining their existence while well, making no efforts to assimilate and also scheming against countries and nations that they occupy and getting kicked out repeatedly or persecuted in other ways. I always had a sense that Christianity was an alien religion. Yeah, me too. Like even when I was a child in Sunday school, it didn't seem it did seem like there was some kind of higher power. So it appealed to that. Right. Sometimes like as the in, I'm speaking about like the intuition of a child, like I agree, it does point towards that sort of one thing. But I would just I wouldn't call it God or anything. I call it nature or whatever, you know, but regardless, like, you know, you can marvel at the beautifulness of that for forever. You know, and that's a great, great thing to do. That's why we like to go on hikes and stuff around here. But anyway, you know. Like, getting back to the point, like, yeah, this, uh, you know, I, I, I was like, why are all the adults and stuff just playing along with this? And, you know, you realize, like, nobody really was entertaining it seriously, but it was just, like, a element of community that they were clinging to, you know? But things are changing. Cable TV coming out, you have Family Guy being broadcast and everything. So they had to change, like, the language that was being used in the sermons and stuff, I remember. Yeah. And, you know... Like, the Protestant way is, like, it's always been focused on, like, predicting doomsday. So I remember telling my mother or whatever that, like, one of the teachers had, like, told us that the world was going to end in 2013. Like, explaining, like, oh, end as we know it, but not actually end and, like, that me. So they're literally telling us that, like, the world's going to end somehow and then trying to shape how we'll understand that. And, you know, once she heard that they were saying that, she took me out of that. Which is, like, well, at least, you know, at least you reacted responsibly. 
uh, what I was doing in there to begin with, you know, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I mean, it just seems silly to me. You know, we, we, we always come up with all these euphemisms, you know, Santa and all that shit. It's just like, no, nope, we, we live in a capitalist country with capitalist values. And that's that's what you get, right? You know, even though Santa Claus used to actually be like, you know, there's a whole ancient European mythology around that. And they've, they've replaced him with a Coca-Cola uh, yeah, mascot. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So I, I was going to mention that, that, you know, I, I was intrigued by the benefits of having a spiritual connection. Knowing and seeing their transformations through your work and stuff, right? As yeah. well. I always had the sense that Christianity was a religion imposed on us. I began to question whether a secular worldview... Well, that's how Europe was kept in the dark so much longer than China and stuff, and how the Dark Ages, you know, that's why they talk about the Enlightenment and stuff, and how it was associated with secularization, how this, in the States, actually, they, they had the ch separation of church and state, which was important. You know, Canada didn't actually have that, so, you know, up until about 1960, our universities and stuff were run by the church. Mm -hmm. And, like, you would be learning Latin in, instead of, like... Your native Gaelic or whatever, right? Yeah. So, so you know, and um, I was exposed to Carl Jung and uh, his idea of the collective unconscious and the archetypes and the inheritance of a race, and it just makes you wonder, like, what's existing in my psyche that I'm just not, yeah I'm not consciously aware of, but I somewhat feel it. You know what 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 is that inheritance that i have um and yeah seeing a mess and wanting to clean it like why yeah you know some people are not like that right clearly yeah yeah so 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 so, so, so what is what is that thing um that we that we have inherited from our ancestors that comes from their own lived experience and, and getting angry when people lie and shit, right you know yeah yeah, um, it all, so, yeah. So, I mean, it was a, a number of things. Um, now, I've always been interested in history and mythology and and all of those things. I really found it fascinating. Like, I read the Upanishads when I was in university. And, uh, you know, I was always interested in mythologies, including Greco-Roman mythology and... European mythology and Aztec mythology and um probably Buddhism Hinduism all that I, shit because in Canada it's like everything's equal you just learn it all cherry pick what you like from yeah absolutely. Ones. you don't so, you don't take you don't take actual serious membership of any of them so yeah. I, I I studied Hinduism and I yeah. I you know read uh, Buddhist uh philosophy and I, I I I tried to practice meditation on my own and I did um but, but these these are just these things do appeal to like there's a reason that these ancient people use them back when we were actually less subverted and smarter about what we needed and shit right like meditating and stuff was just powerful tools and we barely even understand how that stuff works anymore right a lot of it's lost information we also have a common origin um like but, geo on the on the map you mean uh no i mean in our culture okay um that that that's been lost um on the map as well perhaps you know we feel like we're homesick for a place that doesn't exist as they say that's a good point yeah so i i started to think in late 2021 yeah, I, what, what I've been focused on a lot lately, because I, I, I got done with the red pills. I was like, okay, there's infinite red pills. You can go into it infinitely. Like, you'll just not have a great time if you focus too much on that. So I was like, you know, I want to I wanna get back to living my life and stuff, you know. And I, I like, I, sorry, sorry, what was what was just the topic just before that? Uh, I was saying it was late 2021. And I was, I was thinking, okay, what is my own spirituality? What does it mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Eventually, you don't want to keep just, you know, going into this stuff. You just want to figure out how should I live my life, you know, and approach and start working on that, right? You just want to, you know, get to managing things in a way that's effective and sustainable yeah. and, and I, good. Yeah. I had been a secular 
hyper-rational mindset for my adult life. And I was also an alcoholic for my adult life. I decided that I should, I gave myself a second chance at life. Mm -hmm. I need to give my spirituality another chance as well. Oh, wow. Even if my rational mind is telling me otherwise. Yeah. Uh, but I've just be careful with that because I've had religious fanatics that were once my friends tell me that like, no, you know, all of this logic you have, all of this reasoning and methods of analysis.